educators around the world are constantly looking for ways to enhance the appearance of their courses. A new plugin that I have recently found is called Content Pages. It is a free plugin that everyone can use to make one's courses look better, to make the presentations look way more appealing. I have already installed this plugin to my computer and in order to use it uh, on my course, I have to follow these steps. Let's see. First, I click the Turn and Ignite On button. Then, I click on the Add an Activity or Resource option found at the right side of my uh, topic. I am presented with various options. One of those options is uh, Content Pages. I click on it and now I am able to start creating my presentation. First, I have to give it a name. Let's call it Demo presentation very well and uh, I can uh, see that there are various uh, options uh, by the plugin that uh, can help me change how the presentation looks uh, we are going to leave everything blank for the time being actually default okay we're not going to change anything we're just going to Give it a title and hit the save and display button. Okay, now we need to start adding content to our presentation. Let's suppose that our presentation is about monuments, about world monuments. I have already found a few information about uh, monuments all around the globe and uh, I'm going to copy and paste them since uh, the knowledge, the information is uh, copied from Wikipedia. So, first we need to uh, add our cover page. So, cover page, okay, monuments, let's call it monuments. Welcome to this presentation. This is our cover page. It is like a welcome message, okay. Appearance, as we said, we can either change the appearance of the whole presentation or change the appearance of each page inside the presentation. We are going to leave everything as it is. Okay. We are not, we don't care about grade. We care about effects, effects, transition effects, effects from one page to the other, pretty much like PowerPoint. Okay. How the new page or the previous page appear to the user screen. By default, the slide option is selected. There are a couple more, such as the fade one, the scale, etc. Let's stick with the default, the slide. We are clicking the save button. As you see, we've got our first page. Our menu, which consists of a single page called monuments. Okay, our introduction. Uh, in certain cases, I would suggest you to rename the first page, the cover page is either cover page or introduction or something else. In this particular example, we are calling our presentation as monuments. Our cover, our, uh, cover page is called monuments, sorry. Now we have to add extra pages. In order to do so, we are going to click the plus icon at the menu bar. Okay. Now let's start adding some content. As I said, I have already found some information. Let's start with the Great Wall of China. Let's add some pieces of content. Now let's add an image. Pretty much the standard options that, menu, uh, that uh, Moodle offers to its uh, uh, users. Okay, we are talking about the Great Wall of China. Let's upload it. Let's give it a description for those who've got visibility issues let's adjust its size which is pretty important actually okay i uh, most of the times i pick the height at 800 and i leave auto size on in order for moodle to adjust the image accordingly okay and finally let's add a few extra information as well okay as you see, the standard options as we saw before, 
Okay, let's click save changes. Now we've got our second page. There is the menu bar over here. There is the menu, the content pages menu over here. Let's add two more pages really quick. Really quickly, sorry. The Parthenon. Let's add a few extra things as we go on. Okay, let me add an image really quickly. The Parthenon. Okay, such a pretty site. 800. The Parthenon. Nicely done. Mm. Although consistency is always uh, the key. For demonstrational purposes, let's change the transition effect to, let's say, fade. Okay, save changes. And let's add our final page. This is wrong. Okay. Colosseum, Colosseum. Okay. Nice. And finally, let's add an image in between the text. An image of the Colosseum. Okay, cool. Okay, nice. Mm, let's add a different effect called blind. Cool. Now we have added all four pages of our presentation. Let's suppose that we have made a mistake. Let's suppose that we would like Parthenon to be our final page. All we have to do is use those arrows that change the level of each of our pages. Let's get Parthenon down just after the Colosseum. If we decide that we would like to delete something, there is the bin icon. If we would like to hide something for the time being, because we have, uh, we are not sure that we would like to use it, there is the eye icon. And of course, the little cog icon that enables us the ability to uh, uh, alter the information. Let's suppose that we would like to add some extra pieces of content. Okay, pretty nice. Let's see how the user views it. Okay, let me switch role to the user first. Okay, let's change our role to student. Student, student, okay. So, this is the first screen for the user. There is the content itself, the navigation, the contents menu over here, the navigation buttons, and content menu. So, this is way for our users to click this button over here, a pretty nice effect. Or instead of clicking next now or last, as you see, we've got the pages number over here. You can click number three, different effect as you saw, coming from bottom, from top to bottom, or even by clicking here from the content pages menu. Uh, the user go, has got a few other things to inter that can interact with uh, the presentation. The first one, a pretty useful option, is the high contrast, which uh, swaps colors, makes the background black and the text white. Okay, and the comments option that allow the user to type a few uh, things, maybe set a question to his or her tutor, which is you, some notes about this page, etc. Let's go back to our normal role because we would like to add a few questions for our users. Okay, let's return to our normal role. Let's go back to the Great Wall of China and ask our uh, students about its location. In order to add a question, as you see, uh, there are various options. One of those options is this question mark over here, and uh, it says add a new question. Let's add a new question then. Okay, bank question is empty. Okay, yeah, first we have to add a question from the uh, question bank that Moodle offers. Okay, so uh, edit settings. 
So, uh, I had to add a few questions to my question bank. Remember that this is a tool that uses Moodle's question bank in order to produce questions. It's not like H5P, so in order to add questions, you've got to visit the course's question bank. Okay, if you've got any questions on how to visit uh, your question bank inside the course, let me know. Uh, let's go to the Great Wall of China, our second page, and add two questions about it. Okay, to visit the Add New Question button. The first two questions that I've created are about the Great Wall of China. Note that you can add only up to three questions per page. So let me add, let's add the first and the second ones to our uh, first, actually the second page of our presentation. Okay, let's click Add. Great. Let's move on to. Let's jump to the Parthenon and add our final question there. Okay, I already know that my uh, this question named content pages question three is my uh, is the question about path about the Parthenon. So let's click add. And now let's check how the presentation looks like. As you see, right below the content, there is a new button called Answer the Questions. And the user, in order to successfully complete the presentation, has to answer this question. So, let's see how what the user views, what the user sees. Let's switch role to a student. Great. Okay, let's begin. As you see, there are two questions here. Where is the Great Wall of China? Uh, obviously in China. Okay, this is true. Now the user has to click Send Answers. Nice. Okay. You can see is the result. Two out of two. And the score. Okay. The user can repeat this process if he likes to. Okay, and let's move on to our final page, which consists of one question. Okay, we changed the part of the mosque, the Ottoman Turks. Okay, now the presentation has been completed. You see the uh, mark of completion is here, and this is how uh, this uh, great plugin works. It is a great alternative to H5P presentation tool. You can use it and create your own uh, beautiful presentations and engage your students in a different way compared to the uh, regular uh, ways you present information. Thank you. See you on the next video.